Which teapot should you use for Fukumushi Sencha? When it comes to the Kyusu teapot, there are two major considerations to make. The first is whether you go for a built-in clay filter or a circular metal filter. The second is a glazed finish versus an unglazed finish. In this episode, we're going to focus mainly on the filter and compare the black Tokoname Kyusu with the red Tokoname Kyusu and see which one prepares a better cup of Murasaki Sencha. Before we get started, it would really mean a lot to us if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for future tea videos. We have hundreds of videos on all sorts of topics related to Japanese green tea, but for this one, we're going to focus mainly on the teapots. Let's get started. Okay, so what I have here is the red Tokoname Kyusu and the black Tokoname Kyusu. Now these have two different filter styles. The black tokoname is going to have this built-in clay filter here. And the red tokoname is going to have a circular metal filter, as you can see. Um, so I'll just kind of spoil the ending here. This is going to work better for certain teas, and this is going to work better for certain teas. Um, what I have here today is a, a Murasaki Sencha. Um, so this is a Fukumushi Sencha from Mr. Kawaji. Um, right outside of Kagoshima, we got to meet with him a couple years ago. Uh, he really specializes in these deep steamed Fukumushi teas, um, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, and one of these teapots is not going to work well for this tea. I'll just kind of give, give that ending away. Um, we're going to find out which one it is. Uh, when we do this demonstration. So if you look at the leaves here, I think we can agree that's pretty similar amount. We're not really going to do much about the taste. I'll, I'll show you in a second um, how we're going to compare the two teas. Um, but what you can see here is that it's broken down into these little tiny pieces here. Um, so during the deep steaming process, this tea is steamed. All Japanese green teas are steamed after the harvest. This is kind of locks in the flavor, prevents the oxidation process, stops it from turning into a black tea. Um, this tea is different because it's steamed for an extra 30 seconds or so. And during that extra 30 seconds, the leaf is broken down, it becomes more brittle, um, and it's more likely to break you know, inside the packaging or during the processing. So um, normally this would be considered a, a quality indicator. If you have a little dust like this, it usually is indicative of a smaller tea because it's, it's using like kind of the less desirable leaves. But in the case of Fukumushi, it's just the standard. This is just how you, you pick out a Fukumushi tea. Um, because the, um, the, the leaves are, they started out large, they just broke down over time because they're, they're a little bit more brittle. Um, so to compare these two teas, we're just gonna open up the teapots. Pour them in here and you see this really you can really see the, uh, the leaf particles here. Again, not a sign of a bad tea in the case of Fukumushi. It's just what you get from the production. So, using 60 degrees Celsius, I'll start with the red one. For this tea, because we're using smaller leaf particles, um, they actually they have more surface area relative to volume, so they're actually going to infuse quicker. So for these, we only need uh, 45 seconds. You can go up to a minute, uh, but for the Murasaki in particular, it's it's such a powerful tea; it really only needs 45 seconds. Um, so I'm just going to brew them here, and what you'll see is, you know, obviously the most obvious difference between these two teapots is the color. That doesn't make a whole lot of difference, um, ironically. But what does make a difference is the filter style, and so we're gonna we're gonna show you in a second how this manifests. So start by pouring the red one. Nothing too difficult so far. Just shake out the last few drops. Now we go on to the black one. See there's a little bit of spilling here and it stops pouring. Even though you can see here, there's a lot of water still in there. And that's because there's this clog forming 
around the clay filter. So I'll see if I can get the last few drops out. But this clog is going to cause the water to stay in contact with the leaves longer and it's going to negatively affect the brewing because the leaves are going to overbrew. Um, so actually, let's, let's open this up here. Just kind of do a, a forensic analysis of what happened. So with the circular metal filter, you can see there was a clog that was formed by these small leaves, which is natural with the Fukumushi, but you still have this filter along the side where the water was able to move around and pour into the cup. Um, whereas with this one, because it doesn't have that circular filter, the clog formed and there was no way for the water to go. So it just sat inside the teapot and it, it overbrewed a little bit, uh, which is really not, not so good when you have a you know, really strong tea like, like the Murasaki because you kind of want to move it out, move the water out of the leaves quickly once you have that steeping time hit. Mm. So this one's nice and sweet. This one's sweet, but it's got a little bit more bitterness to it because the leaves are in contact a little bit longer. Um, I think we'll really notice this in the second steeping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drink these teas. And then when we come back, uh, I'm going to show you how the second steeping goes. Okay, we are now back and ready for the next steeping. I'm going to go ahead and this time we're only going to be doing 20 seconds because the leaves are already opened up. And this is where things I think will get interesting. So 20 seconds steeping, basically as soon as the water goes in, it's ready to come out. Uh, so we're going to check this out here. Really nice pour here. You see that beautiful green color. Uh, this is typical with the second steeping. So that's the easy one. Remove this aside, and then I'm going to. You see, it's dripping because there's um, there's a clog forming, and the water's trying to move around, so it's going to go out the top. So notice where this stops pouring. There's still a lot left in there. So the water has nowhere else to go, so it's it's starting to come out the top, which. You know, can make a little bit of a mess. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this one's definitely, definitely smoother. This one, there's some bitterness here because the water stayed in the leaves too long. And you can see, actually, I spilled a little bit of water here because it was, it was moving around. So, you know, not a big deal. I'll admit this is not quite as bad as I was thinking with this teapot here. It's my first time using this for Fukumushi. Um, I was expecting it to be a lot worse. It wasn't that bad, but if your favorite type of tea is Fukumushi, it might just make your life a lot easier to get a teapot that has a circular filter like this one. And these ones also tend to be cheaper as well. So. Um, if you already have this, this black Kyusu at home, um, you know, this one is a, is a cheaper option. Uh, this one you can use for Gyokuro, Kabuse Sencha, kind of the more premium teas. And then this one you can use for uh, your Banchas, um, your Fukumushi Sencha, obviously, stem teas, things like that. Uh, the reason for this is because the red Tokonami Kyusu, at least the ones that we have uh, on offer, uh, have a much heavier glaze. So the tea is in contact with that, that thin layer of glaze rather than the clay itself. Um, so this you can maybe see here. It's, uh, it's a little bit more of that, that matte finish. So there's a lot less glaze here. Um, so the clay is in direct contact with the tea, which is great for teas like Gyokuro and Sencha, um, but for teas like you know Genmaicha, you're really going to kind of season the teapot with that that kind of popcorn rice flavor that you may not want when you're brewing other teas. 
Um, so what sometimes we like to do is, is keep this one clean. Um, you know, don't brew the hojicha in here, brew the genmaicha in here, maybe even the bancha, you know, things that, that may kind of season the teapot in a very specific way that might make it difficult to enjoy a tea like Yokoro, um, go for the red tokonamikyusu, and then, you know, kind of your premium Yokoro teas, Kabuse Sencha, uh, go with this one, because that, that direct contact with the clay is actually going to kind of accentuate some of these uh, more savory flavors that you're looking for. Um, and then the circular filter is just going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to uh, a tea like the Murasaki Sencha um, with these, these fine leaf particles that we saw. Um, so I hope you guys found this helpful uh, when it comes to picking out a teapot, which teapot works for, for different teas. Um, if you want to pick up a teapot, you can go to neoteas.com. We have a few and we're, we'll even give you uh, this red tokonami kyusu, not this one specifically, but a different version um, on when you sign up for the monthly tea club. So with the monthly tea club, you'll get two, two or three packs of tea like this shipped to you every month. You'll also get the uh, Kyusu teapot for free the first month, so you can prepare all the teas. Um, so you'll, you'll save money, you'll get to try plenty of different teas, and you'll get the, the proper tools to prepare them. So thank you all so much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, it would really mean a lot to us if you could give the video a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay tuned for future tea videos. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.